Hey guys, today we're gonna to be discussing how to set up some basic HomeKit automations using our Vocalink Smart Contact Sensor. Contact sensors are great for automating doors, windows, and actually lots of other things if you get creative. So if you're new at this, I'm gonna show you how to set up a couple basic HomeKit automations with our contact sensor. And be sure to stick around because I'm also gonna give you some other really cool ways to automate your contact sensors that you may not have considered. Let's go. Yo, what's going on guys? Thanks so much for joining me today. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Shane and on this channel, I'm building an easy smart home using HomeKit with new videos releasing every Sunday right here. So contact sensors aren't really the most exciting or sexy smart home products out there, but they can really yield some cool effects and results if you get creative and use them right. Now today's video is sponsored by Vocalink. If you've been watching my videos for a while, you may know that I'm a fan of the Vocalink HomeKit products. They make some really good stuff. And today we're gonna to be trying out their new VS1 Smart Contact Sensor and use it to set up some pretty cool HomeKit automations. Now you can currently buy this contact sensor for $22.99 on Amazon. And they also sell a double pack for $36.99 right now on Amazon. So that's not too bad. Two contact sensors for under 40 bucks. Now I'll put affiliate links to this contact sensor down below if you decide you want to pick one up for yourself. So let's take a look. Pretty basic stuff here. We get the contact sensor itself. Plenty of extra 3M sticky pads. An included standard CR2032 coin battery. And our user guide. So let's take the sensor out of the packaging and put in the provided battery. Now the sensor does use Bluetooth 5.0 to connect to HomeKit. Uh, 5.0 means it has a little bit better range and usually a little bit faster, but keep in mind, uh, in my experience, Bluetooth can be a little bit slower sometimes. And you're also gonna have to consider that Bluetooth range. You're gonna need to make sure this is within Bluetooth range of your HomeKit hub. Now they claim you get up to six months of battery life with this sensor. Personally, I would kind of like to see that a little bit longer for a sensor, but fortunately it does just take that standard little coin battery there, so replacing the battery should be pretty easy. With that said, if you do get these sensors, keep in mind you will have to replace that battery at some point in the future. And if you do like the manual says and put the 3M sticky tape here on the back as I've done, you'll run into an issue when you try to replace that battery because it will be stuck to the wall. You'll have to remove the 3M tape and everything. So now to get around this, instead of putting the 3M tape here maybe consider putting it on the back of the battery instead so that when it is time to change that battery you can just twist off the sensor and leave the back of the battery cover right there attached to the door frame or wherever you have this installed uh, and pull this off replace the battery and then twist it back on that way you're not having to redo that 3m tape there and peel that off the wall every time you change the battery now there are a couple things that I really like about the sensor for one you can actually place the little magnet part on either side of the sensor and it will still work so that's really nice so uh, it's very versatile in your kind of installation options because of that for one I do also like how thin the sensor is so it has a pretty cool sleek looking design and it's nice and thin so I do like that and as you've probably noticed it has this little green LED that lights up every time the sensor is open and closed that's just a matter of preference. You may love it, you may hate it. I don't know, I'll leave that one up to you. And finally, I noticed you can actually have a pretty wide gap between the two parts of the sensor before it actually reads as open. The gap distance for this to still read as closed here is actually quite a bit further than many other sensors that I've used. Now this can be particularly useful if you have kind of odd door frames or windows or different use cases that may be difficult to get this sensor uh, real close together. So all in all, it's a great little contact sensor if you're looking for just kind of a standalone contact sensor that works in HomeKit. Uh, that'll allow you to create some cool automations. Now, speaking of automations, let's set some up and discuss some cool ways to use this thing. So the first one we're gonna do is really one of the most basic automations here. This is gonna simply turn on a smart light bulb, actually a vocal link smart bulb, just inside my front door when the contact sensor is opened at night. That way we'll never have to walk into a dark house. Then I'll have that light turn off automatically after about three minutes. By then I've usually moved through the house and turned on other lights and should be good to go. Now to set this up, we'll use the home app. Just tap on new automation, tap a sensor detect something. Let's find our vocal link contact sensor. Tap opens. Now tap on time and choose at night. Tap next. 
Now we'll look for our lamp. Again, this is just a vocal link smart bulb that's exposed to HomeKit. Choose next. Make sure the lamp turns on. Tap turn off and choose after three minutes. And choose done. And that's it, as simple as that. That is a basic contact sensor automation. Now when I open this front door at night, it's gonna turn on that lamp for three minutes, allowing me to see my way through the house. Okay, now let's do one more automation and try something a little more fun. All right, so here's our scenario. Let's say we have a teenager that lives in our house and that teenager is expected not to leave the house, you know, in the middle of the night. Now, I'm not really sure why a teenager would wanna sneak out in the middle of the night. I personally never did anything like that as a child. But let's say we are concerned with this. You could put a contact sensor like this on the child's window or on the front door or really wherever you want that makes sense. Then I'll create a new automation that will flash my vocal link lights red between certain hours of the night if that contact sensor is opened. And in this scenario, not only is it useful to have you know, the sensor change my lights in the middle of the night, but it can also send me notifications to my phone, you know, only at night if we want to. Now, a while back, I actually set up a really cool scene in my house already called Code Red that actually does flash my uh, light strip red in the kitchen and I think one or two of my other lights. This is a really cool scene. I'll utilize this scene in this automation. Vocalink actually sells the only HomeKit lights that I've ever seen that expose this kind of light effect to HomeKit allowing you to set up scenes and stuff like that. I think it's a custom attribute or something that they expose to HomeKit but it does allow you to control these scenes and stuff within HomeKit which is really cool. Anyways, let's go ahead and set up this contact sensor to trigger my code red scene, but only during the midnight hours. We'll open up the home app again and create a new automation. Once again, choose a sensor detect something. We'll look for our vocal link contact sensor, choose next, tap opens, and this time we'll tap on a time. We want specific time, so let's tap that and then choose 12 a.m. start and 8 a.m. end. Choose next. Now I'm going to look for the scene that I've already set up. I'll choose my code red scene and choose done. And that's it. I'll set up again a very basic automation here, but this one will trigger a scene that I already set up, that code red scene that's gonna do some really cool stuff. Now how cool is this automation? Another really cool thing you could do with something like this if you wanted, you can have the HomePod play alert sounds and things like that if that contact sensor is opened up during the night or whatever, you can really get creative with it. So with that said, let's discuss some other creative cool, interesting ways we can use contact sensors. Well, I did actually set up an automation a while ago that turns some of my bedroom lights a certain color at 9 p.m. every night if I left a window open. So the way this one works is that every night at 9 p.m. it will turn those lights a certain color, but first it's gonna check to make sure that window contact sensor is open, then turn the lights a color. If the window is closed, it won't do anything. This way I never go to bed without remembering to close the windows in my house. Or what about one that turns off your heating or air when a window is open? One of my favorites is actually just a really simple, practical automation. When I open a closet door, turns on the light in the closet. When I close the door, it turns off the light. So this is a really great one for a closet, really easy to set up and very practical. You can even use a contact sensor like this on a safe, whether it's a gun safe or just any kind of safe, that way you'll get notifications you know, say when you're not at home anytime, if somebody were to ever get into that safe. And you could of course use this to trigger other things like turning lights certain colors or maybe even playing an alarm sound on your home pod if you're not home. Things like that can get really cool. Similarly, you can use a contact sensor on your beer fridge or maybe even your liquor cabinet. Now you can make sure your fridge never gets left open or nobody's getting into your liquor cabinet that shouldn't be. Again, these poor teens, man, they don't stand a chance. Another interesting one is you could actually use one on your mailbox if you're kind of worried about your mail or you want to get notified when your mail comes or, you know, turn your living room lamp pink when the mail gets delivered. You can do all kinds of stuff like that. Again, with something like this, keep in mind that range, you're going to still need to be in range and your mailbox might be a little bit far for a sensor, but if it can reach another cool idea, what about using a contact sensor on your recliner? If you can get underneath there and find a good spot to put the two ends of this contact sensor, you can create an automation that when you open your recliner, 
Anytime after 6 p.m., it will initiate your movie time scene or play some relaxing music on your HomePod or whatever. I even remember reading online somewhere that one person used a contact sensor on their cat's litter box door. I guess some of these cat's litter boxes have a door and every time the contact sensor was open, so anytime the cat went in there for the litter box, it would turn on a smart plug that's connected to a air freshener and the air freshener would run for 15 minutes every time the cat went in there to do their business. Gotta love the creativity there on that one. So these are a few ideas on some creative ways you can use contact sensors in your smart home for automations. And again, I've got affiliate links to this Vocal Link contact sensor and all the other smart home products that I use in my setup in the description below. If you have any great ideas or interesting stuff that you're doing with contact sensors, please share down below. I'd love to hear it. If you have any questions at all, feel free to drop those down in the comment section below as well. Thanks again to Vocal Link for sponsoring this video. If you got something out of this and enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Click that bell icon so you get notified when we post new home kit videos every week right here. Thanks again for joining me this week and until next time, we'll see y'all later.